Chair recognizes the lady from Polk, Representative Confrist. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Ladies and gentlemen of the House, um, I would like to talk for a moment, if I could, about workforce and education as a workforce tool. Um, if we want to talk about our future, if we want to talk about our workforce, I don't understand why we're undercutting education, which is going to be our workforce. We encourage our kids to have healthy lifestyles. We want our kids. We, we spend money on programs to, to get rid of childhood obesity and encourage healthy eating. And yet we allow PE classes to have 100 students in the gym at the same time. We fight for civic engagement. We want our kids to be good listeners and, and good you know, conveners of facts. And yet we allow 40 people in a government class with backpacks in the aisle so kids can't leave the room. We allow econ classes to have between 40 and 50 kids. We want our kids to understand they don't all need to go to college, and yet we're cutting tech ed teachers so that teachers have 40 to 50 kids in the room. There are kids who want to take shop who have to wait every other week until they can touch a saw or a piece of wood. This is the message we're sending to our kids. We care about the workforce, but maybe not until you get out there, or maybe not well, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> um, we care about dropout prevention, and we get rid of campus monitors. We get rid of people in the hallways who can help kids feel loved and accepted and safe. We say we care about mental health, and we cut counselors at schools because we cannot afford them. There are 800 students at Merrill Middle School in my district. There is one school counselor to treat them. That is not okay. I do not see these things as luxuries. I do not see these things as anything other than a key part of our education system. And if I were to vote on this bill, I would be saying that 2.06% is good enough. And I do not believe so. Thank you.